Some of the Nginx systems are better model if you also incorporate a viscously damped element. So take, for example, uh, the suspension of a car. So you have shock absorbers in there and shock absorbers essentially have a cylinder. Okay, I have a cylinder with, a, with, with something, you know, like that looks like a piston and might have holes in them. Okay, so as this piston is forced through this fluid medium, so you have, you know, let's say oil or water, some fluid medium all around it then the water basically comes out these through these holes okay so it, it gets pushed so the piston goes down and the wall comes comes through the holes or it could move you know around it as well okay and the characteristics of something like this is that when you have a rigid body moving through a fluid medium the rigid body experiences some drag in this case that drag is not the dry friction like coulomb friction model of the friction but more like viscous or, or fluid drag right and we have already seen that the drag forces f sub d are usually proportional to the velocity or velocity square right so we have the drag coefficient cd uh, multiplied with velocity that give you dra the the drag forces themselves so for moderate speed we model drag forces as simply some constant times the velocity and that's the model for viscously damped element that we'll be using in, in this module so typically, we will model the viscously damped element with a dash pop, which will be shown something like this. We'll, we'll show a cylinder and we'll show a piston. Okay, that's how we'll show it. And we'll say that the job of the drag force is to oppose the motion, the relative motion, and it is equal to CD times V. Okay, so instead of saying CD, we'll just write CV or CX dot if let's say the motion is in the X direction and velocity is given as X dot. Okay, so let's extend what we've done before we have seen a spring mass system before so we have k we have the mass m now what we'll do is you know we'll incorporate a dash part we'll incorporate a dash part so that's our particle all right okay and the viscous damping coefficient for this dash part is given as c which is known as the drag coefficient also okay so when you have a situation like this of course we do the analysis as we have done before we displace it by amount x we draw the free body diagram we have k times x and now we have the force due to the to this uh, dash part that will be cx dot right so sigma f equal to ma is going to be minus kx minus cx dot equal to m times x double dot so that's mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to zero and that's your differential equ equation in this case you can see that this is the extra term so again, I'm going to put in the standard form by dividing by m and we get this. So that's your equation of motion for an engineering system, which has been modeled as a particle, a spring, and a dash part, okay? So how do we solve something like this? Well, clearly this is a second order, uh, or second order ordinary differential equation in the homogeneous form, right? So we can solve this in the similar way as we did before. Let's assume x is e power lambda t. So x dot is lambda e power lambda t. x double dot is lambda square e power lambda t. And let's substitute for all this in the differential equation. We get this plus c lambda e power lambda t plus k over m. So actually it's a c over m. So k over m e power lambda t equal to zero. E power lambda t is common to all the terms. We can take it outside. So that gives us lambda square plus c over m plus k over m equal to zero, right? Uh, I forgot the lambda here. All right. So clearly this is not going to be zero because that would lead to a trivial solution, which means that this should be equal to zero. So we have lambda square plus c over m lambda plus k over m equal to zero. And this is also called characteristic equation so what is the solution for this so lambda is equal to minus c over m plus minus c over m whole square minus 4 k over m times 2 right okay so this can be also written as minus c over 2m plus minus square root c over 2m square minus 4 over 4 cancel so we get k over m right so that is the lambda and clearly you can see that it has two solutions with one because of the plus sign the other due to the minus sign right so it has two solutions since we are solving a homogeneous ordinary differential equation 
we will form a linear combination of the two solutions and that will be a solution as well, right? So let's first look at you know, some of the interesting cases. Uh, if this value is zero, okay, this value is zero. So if we set C over T M whole square minus K over M to be zero, then what do we get? We'll call in this situation when C, when this is zero, C to be equal to something called C critical, okay, C critical. So C critical, uh, we'll, uh, you just write it simply as C sub C. So we'll do, we'll do the same thing. So C sub C over two M square equal to K over M. And we already know that omega n square is k over m, right? So if there was no you know, dash part, you just had a spring mass system, we know the circular natural frequency in that case would have been the square root of k over m. So this is equal to omega n square. So that gives us c critical equal to 2m times omega n, okay? So the value of the c that makes this, this square root part over here zero is equal to 2m omega n. Okay? And we'll call this value of the c to be critical damping coefficient, right? For the reason that will become very very clear to you soon, okay? So lambda uh, is equal to minus e over 2m plus minus this value over here. So now based on what happens inside the square root, we can actually devise three cases, okay? So one is, case one is what is known as over damped system. So over damped system is characterized by the fact that c is more than c critical. So if C is more than C critical, we know that this value over here inside the square root has to be positive, right? Which means that this the root, the lambda, the value of the lambda is going to be real, right? If, the, if what happened inside the square root was negative, then you know, lambda won't be a real value. But if the square root is positive, then this will be a real value. So over damped system is characterized by the fact that C is more than C critical. So if that's the case, then we have two values of the lambda, right? So let's write them. So we have lambda 1 equal to minus c over 2m 2m plus square root of c over 2m whole square minus k over m and lambda 2 would be equal to minus c over 2m minus square root of c over 2m square minus k over m. So if you were to form the solution, they would be x equal to, you know, some constant, let's say a times e power lambda 1t plus b times e power lambda 2t, right? So this would be a times e to power lambda 1t. We have minus c over 2m constant, so we'll get e to power minus c over 2mt as constant for both the terms, and then we will have uh, the next term, which is e to the power square root of c over 2m whole square minus k over m plus b times e to the power minus c2m is common. So let me write it like this. You know, so I'll bring it outside and this will be b e to the power minus the square root of c over 2m square minus k over m and t of course is t, right? So that would be the solution for this differential equation when C is more than C critical and we call it over damped system because C is more than a critical value of the damping coefficient which makes this part inside the square to be zero, okay? So what kind of solution is this? So first of all, the question is, is the system going to oscillate if that's the solution? Well, clearly there are no harmonic functions over here, so which means that it is actually not going to oscillate at all. So if you plot X, as a function of time in this case, it would look something like this, okay? It would look something like this. As t goes to infinity, you can see this goes to e to the power minus infinity, which will be zero. So eventually it's going to, you know, come to, an, to come to a stop, right? So in this case, if you displace the system, so if you take this particle, physically speaking, if you take this particle and c was more than c critical, you move it to by amount x, it's going to go back to its equilibrium position after a long time okay without any oscillation whatsoever so if your if your goal was to actually design some oscillation then that won't be that would be happening right and in fact in many of the situations that may be desirable so for example you've probably seen you know some of the doors in, in on campus or maybe in your home also although it's kind of uncommon at home to have some dashboards right on the top 
that essentially prevent the, the door from banging against the frame of the door, right? You know, essentially you open the door and then you don't have to close it. It comes to close on its own uh, without banging against the frame. So that is not an oscillatory situation and maybe that would be desirable. So if you do an over damp system, you, know, you pick the value of the C to be more than C critical, then that's exactly what would happen. The case two is critically damp situation. So critically damp situation or critical damping okay so critical damping is when c is equal to c critical right so when c is equal to c critical we know that this square root part is actually zero so you have actually repeated roots right because the lambda is only equal to minus c over 2m so when you have repeated roots because this is equal to both lambda 1 as well as lambda 2 x is given by a plus bt times e to the power lambda which is minus c over 2n times t right so that is the solution for the critical damping case so even in this case, you can see that the system is not going to oscillate because as t goes to infinity, this term is going to go to zero, right? So when c is equal to c critical, you know, you would get something like a similar curve, right? You know, the, the, the pattern is going to be almost same, all right? But the difference between over damping and critical damping is that the system would come to stop as fast as you can, as, it, as fast as it, it can, right? So from a design point of view, if you wanted the system to come to a stop, then you want to pick your critical damping coefficient to be such that the system comes to a stop as soon as it can, all right? The third case is the case of what is known as light damping, so, or under damping, okay, under damping. So under damping is when C is less than C critical. So now that's interesting. When C is less than C critical, what happens in here? This quantity would be actually negative right so this quantity would be negative which means your answer would be actually an imaginary value okay so what we're going to do is we're going to write what you see inside here as omega sub d so we'll write this as omega sub d so omega d to indicate this is associated with uh, damping is equal to uh, the value is c over 2m square so c over 2m square minus k over m square and this quantity is negative, so we'll make this to be minus and this to be in you know, a positive, okay? And this is not actually oh, k over m squared, it's only k over m, right? It's just uh, k over m, yes, okay? So we have that. Now k over m is already omega n squared, so this is equal to omega n squared minus c, and c is uh, in terms of c critical. What is c in terms of c critical? It's uh, c critical is 2m omega n, right? So we'll, we'll substitute that too in a minute. So this is c over 2m omega squared. And C critical is 2m omega n, yeah. So C critical is 2m omega n. So I'm going to write that first again, 2m omega n. So m is equal to C critical over 2 omega n. So I'm going to make that substitution over here. And you get omega n squared minus C over uh, C critical over omega n. That goes over here, right? So omega n squared comes out and we get 1 minus C over C critical squared. And that's what we're calling omega sub d, which is the frequency asso associated with the, the damping part, right? So which means lambda 1 is now, let's write that. So lambda 1 is equal to minus c over 2n plus, no minus, so we're just writing one of them. So plus omega d, right, i, which is your you know, complex number. And then lambda 2 is equal to minus c over 2n minus omega d times i. Right, that's what we're getting. Okay, so actually, this is you know omega d square, right? This is omega d squares, which means because this is the square root over here, right? This is square root, so the inside is actually omega d square. So that's what we get for lambda one and lambda two. So now we can write x. What does x looks like? X looks like e to the power minus c over two m t, which comes out times a times cosine omega d t plus b times sine omega dt right and cosine omega d and sine omega dt are the two solutions we know clearly because this is actually e to the power i omega d so just like as we have seen before when we solve the equation of motion for a simple harmonic oscillator we had you know cosine omega n and sine omega n co cosine omega nt and sine omega nt as a function we have these as well over here right so this can be written in a slightly different form right so we can pick uh, an amplitude for it so we're going to pick let's say d and this would be sine 
omega bt plus y and that's xt so that's is the that is the solution for for the you know motion of the particle right which is dependent on clearly the value of the damping coefficient which is dependent on this uh, damping frequency omega sub d which in turn is dependent on the omega n as well as the c critical and the d which we don't know right so d and phi are essentially the two unknowns here which we can determine from some initial condition right but we want to understand what does this look like first of all is the system going to oscillate the answer to that question is yes because we have a sign here if we didn't have any harmonic functions over here any periodic function not necessarily sign but any periodic function then this system would not oscillate so this is going to oscillate but you look at this term this term is also playing a role as t goes to infinity this term as t goes to infinity e to the power minus c over 2 m t goes to zero right which means that eventually this vibration is also going to die down so it is going to oscillate but it's going to die down right so if you plot this what might it look like it might look something like this so you have the oscillations and then oscillations eventually die down right and then if you look at the asymptotic relationships so you know essentially like the boundaries these are described by this function so this is e power minus c over 2n times t right and same is the case over here so yes there is oscillation but this oscillation is eventually going to die down